What's up, sexy people? Back again with a new Geo update. I'm very sorry that it took some time. Things have been pretty busy around here and the stock was pretty boring in the meantime. Nothing actually happened. I mean, a few things happened that we're going to talk about in a few seconds, but so far it was there was no big price action to talk about there were no big catalysts uh, that were that we should talk about basically nothing happened it was just boring sideways trading for i don't know i guess it was a whole month since there was this mini squeeze in the past uh, it was so boring i grew a freaking mustache right so i guess we should just jump into our little update i hope everybody's doing fine actually i mean things are getting better here in germany uh corona wise everything wise uh, things get back to normal um it seems like it seems that we are uh besides uh parts of germany are flooded because of heavy weather heavy rains um everything seems to be pretty fine and it's a great summer so far at least in our uh part here in the south so um this is this is very nice you can go outside you can go into the beer garden have a couple of beers talk to people meet friends and so on so things are nice um but unfortunately our beloved geo stock is just super boring but let's get into the presentation all right um little disclaimer here just take your time and read everything read through everything this is not professional investment advice i'm not a financial advisor i'm just making these videos to talk about the stock in case there are some information that you didn't have that i don't have feel free to comment in the comment section below and let's just share some info the channel is doing pretty fine i think i never expected to actually get over 100 subscribers but here i am 122 subscribers i'm very very sorry again that um, the update took a while but there was actually nothing to talk about and uh, besides, there's uh, a life um, that I have to uh, live and that uh, involves many other people, many other things. So things were busy. But that shouldn't be your issues. We want to talk about Geostock. Okay, so early June, I did a post on StockTwits and um, I was talking about I really like that uh, the community is growing. It was uh, just over 4,000 people back in uh, early June. And then in a few days, uh, the community on StockTwits uh, grew to over 8,000. And that's where we are stuck since a couple of weeks. Um, shortly after we passed 8,000, there was this uh, squeeze um, with a daily high of around $11. That was pretty exceptional i think and um, that's when you can see okay uh things can happen uh, things can happen pretty fast with this stock because of the high short interest of uh, the low price um all of the different opinions toward the stocks um maybe institutional buyers are getting in we, uh, we don't still really know what's happening in the background i mean there's some uh, serious restructuring going on um the ceo uh, abandoned uh, his CEO position. He went uh, just to the board. There's a new CEO um, with a with a private equity background, I think. So uh, pretty much a financial guy, and uh, who should be 
knowing what he's doing in terms of unlocking shareholder value. Because as a private equity guy, what you want to do is you want to buy cheap stuff and you want to turn companies around and then sell it for a, for a more expensive price. And I think that his incentives are pretty much uh, focused on uh, unlocking shareholder value, which will be beneficial to the long-term holders. So right here, the community was growing. Um, since then, nothing nothing actually happened and it's, it's been just a boring stock. Uh, investing is, uh, from what I've known or from what the, the, the geniuses say, like a Warren Buffett, a Peter Lynch, a Michael Burry, investing is pretty damn boring, right? If you, Probably, I mean, you should, you should uh, depends on, on what you're doing. If you're a trader, every day is exciting because you're betting on price action, maybe leverage, maybe with some uh, derivatives, option trading, then, then life's pretty fun. Uh, and the stock market is basically created for traders, for seeing uh, price movement every day. I mean, it's, it's just crazy when you go onto the, the ticker and you get an update every second. Uh, if you have lived through the GME short squeeze, uh, I uh, personally, I was just hooked on the screen for five days straight from uh, trading start to trading end. And it was like watching a super intense football game, soccer game, whatever games you are into. Uh, this is just freaking addictional, right? But if you're a long-term investor and you are you're uh, doing your homework on a fundamental and you are um, investing for the long term, for the turnaround, uh, seeing mispriced gambles, uh, it might just take a while and maybe options are not your best choice. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, if you if you're investing in the stock and you have to to wait for things to turn around. Things get boring in the meanwhile, and it's been a month. I think my last video was four or five weeks ago. And uh, from a pricing point of view, it's been just fucking boring. Okay, um, what happened on Reddit? Um, there was early May, first of May. There was uh, this. Uh, there was a subreddit created uh, for Geo Group and. I remember I was one of the uh, early members and we had like uh, not even a hundred members, the Georillas, right? Um, more like some kind of uh, meme stock naming right here, but we get into the meme stock uh, character of the stock in a, in a few minutes. Um, the community has grown to almost a thousand. I mean, it's, it's growing slowly, but steadily. So um, I am not really, well, I'm just browsing through Reddit here and there to see what kind of news is out there. But most of the time it's some sort of uh, when does Reddit recognize Geo? When does it become the next meme stock? When does the short squeeze happen? Blah, blah. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm in it for the long term and uh, I see it as a legit stock with a, at least $15 price target. And there was an article recently um, that took uh, an interesting position on uh, what could be a fair value of uh, of the stock, uh, um, focusing on different scenarios, um, just fair valuation compared to the value ratios of, of other uh, uh, reads um, uh, based on, on the replacement value and so on. So this guy is taking into account uh, construction costs of newer facilities and there's a moonshot potential. And I will show you, uh, you get the link, uh, on the on one of the slides later and uh, i will also upload uh, this uh, presentation on my um, public google drive and you can uh, get the download link below in the video description so yeah we have a reddit group it's growing steadily uh, information in there is um, very mixed i would say but uh, it's worth uh, to to join the group and and just uh, see what people talk about Right, just get a, a touch and feel of uh, kind of the sentiment out there. What happened on Wall Street bets? Um, this is also something people are talking about. When is this short going to be recognized on Wall Street bets? When will the uh, how do they call themselves the the crayon eaters, the apes, the autists? I really like the term autists a lot better. Uh, at the end of last year, now they they call themselves apes. Um, well, if you watch what happened to GME and especially of uh, especially AMC, I mean, yeah, this is going into a kind of a monkey direction, right? Because AMC, um, 
I'm not going to talk about what my value expectation is, but it's a lot lower than what the current share price is today. But um, very controversial opinion nowadays because uh, I've read, uh, I think, one post that said, well, if the squeeze is really happening, this stock might go to 200,000 a piece. Well, not going to happen, right? I mean, uh, just think about the, the, the market cap. This would be one of the, I think, the most valuable company in the world which is basically a cinema chain in 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 the united states uh no digital business so on so um yeah amc right here there you go but what's happening on wall street bets well basically nothing because we have a smaller market cap the market cap that we have to have is above 1.25 billion Otherwise, you get blocked. I tried to post some stuff uh, about Geo there. Then you get the you get blocked by the the bot, and you can then talk to the the admins of the group. But what are the admins doing in the group? Um, I think I wrote them three messages. Basically, nothing. Uh, you won't get an answer, so nothing is happening. So just uh, the rules are pretty. Um, yeah, pretty tight there. So we, we have to wait. I mean, we can't really post about Geo Group or mention the ticker and uh, because we just get blocked. So where are we? We uh, well, we are just halfway there. I mean, we had almost 1 billion market cap when we had that little squeeze around uh, 10 to 11 bucks. Uh, simple calculation. We have 120 million shares outstanding. Uh, 10 share, uh, $10 a piece is 1.2 billion. So... We had that mark for uh, one day, and now we're back to seven hundred, uh, uh, almost eight hundred million dollars in market cap, which is basically nice. If you, fr from my point of view, um, and if you if you share my views on the valuation of the company, then this is a nice price point to just jump in. Um, and uh, what I would do, or what I, what what I'm doing, and maybe maybe I'm opening up my my portfolio or my positions on the stock in a in the next video. Uh, mostly I switched to stocks. I had some options. I sh should have sold some options uh, during the squeeze, but uh, how do you say? Uh, pigs get slaughtered, right? Um, I was just waiting, but um, I don't really, I don't really believe in the pigs get slaughtered because um, it's just it's, uh, well, you're waiting, and 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 to me, a fifteen dollars price point is still still totally legit. So I'm just uh, sticking to my options and wait until uh, price is moving up but you want to keep in mind um, to uh, i don't know i'm not a, a big friend of of, of those uh, weekly options or daily options trading uh, just by leaps uh, long-term options or at least with a with a few months of runway because you don't know what happens in between right so um what i would what, what i would do right now if i if i would just um if i would if i could jump back in time and, and and have cash and invest in the stock i would buy stocks right now um long-term options with that are in the money um because you wanna then you have to you have you have a bottom um because because i think that's that's bottom price if it goes down to 490 or that was the lowest price point i think that that was it's not gonna happen in a in the, in the next few in the, in the next near term right because that was just uh, oversold um i think we have reached the bottom right here at, at 650 something um and uh what what do you want to have you want to have downside protection so you want to buy in the money options um but you participate uh over proportional over proportionally when when stock price goes up uh, compared to to the stocks uh depending on on, on at which price you buy but i think that right now option in the money options are priced kind of fair um stock is is just this price point is is, is great um and to me this is still uh a pretty safe at least 100 percent upside from here but it might take a while you don't know when it happens uh, you might want to wait um, until the next election until biden is out and uh you have to rep uh, the republicans um back in the office and so on and things are uh, looking better for the private prison uh industry so i don't know but kind of got lost here uh i wanted to talk about wall street bets right wall street bets we're not in there i don't know when we're gonna get there uh, prices to increase um up to 10 again 
and then we can talk about it. And then it's not even safe that those uh, uh, the Wall Street bet apes will just jump onto the stock because it's very controversial. Do we have the potential of a short squeeze? Short squeeze is uh, some of the words I really uh, got tired of hearing because everything is a short squeeze right now. People don't even know what a short squeeze is because because um, uh, price action or, or high jumps in the, in the price is not even a short squeeze. Short squeeze is when there are many shares short and all of the sudden those shorts triggered by a catalyst, uh, an event, something that gets them by surprise are turned into buyers of the stock and demand and supply do not meet on a on a on a level that uh, that that well how do you say the uh, supply and demand don't meet on a, on a price level that uh, makes it easy just to to set a price so what happens is all of those short sellers have to buy back tremendous amount of shorts in a very rapid uh, in, in a very short amount of time so what happens is you have much more demand than supply and that's when that's what drives up prices and it's just a vicious circle when you are a short seller because then you might get a margin call because you're losing money uh, the higher the stock price gets and then you get the margin call so the, the your broker is forcing you to close your position and, and buy back the shares even at a huge loss so that's what a short squeeze really is and you need um, a big amount of, of uh, shares sold short and they need to get locked in somehow or there needs to be an event that triggers um, that just turns around the the short sellers uh, for 180 degrees, so they have to buy. And what we have right here um, is that still 35% of the float are short. Um, I don't have the, the 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 latest Ortex data. I don't know how reliable Ortex is. But uh, end of June, we have 35%, and that's still freaking much for... As a, a small cap company like Geo with 122 million shares outstanding. So is there a squeeze potential? Definitely. There, there is a not zero percent chance of a short squeeze. And we, we saw it in early June that this might happen. And it goes from one day to the other. Um, 188 million shares were traded. Normally, it's like two and a half to four millions uh, uh, of shares that are trading in a regular trading day of Geo Group. So things are happen very uh, things might happen very very fast and um, you want to you want to you want to check your positions daily um, and you don't want to sleep out the one day squeeze because uh, my if if i had sold if i had closed all the positions that i had um, that would be a would have been a 50% return on just one day um, but I didn't sell, so I'm still stuck here. But I think that the stock price is going higher. The squeeze potential is a nice benefit for me. I really like to have it. Um, it's fun to have it, right? Because uh, it's just a, sh a, a, a shortcut to earning money. But um, you can't rely on it. And um, you want to buy a legit stock that has um, that is heavily underpriced. And Geo stock is such a stock. Having the short squeeze potential, just to me, nice to have, uh, helping us investors to move to our fair value quicker. Um, but I wouldn't count on it. And if you're trading on it, and if you're betting on it, you may be right because of the pricing point of view, but where you can be wrong all the time is just the timing. You don't know when it happens. You don't know when it happens. You don't know if it happens. And so speculating with options is is gambling. There's no other word for it. And um, th this is something, well, I have to be honest, I um, I have some some options that are that are out of the money, but because um, if there's a short squeeze, you make tons of money, right? Um, but I consider this positions um as basically lost money this is this is just gambling to me and of course you want to have this little if you're honest with yourself and and i have to be honest with myself you you want to have this uh kind of you know uh excitement 
sometimes. If it happens, you want to participate. But you have to be honest with yourself. This, the, it still is just gambling. I'm gambling with smaller positions. And if, if that money is gone, I consider that money already gone. Basically, I will consider myself a long-term investor with most of my money placed in long-term positions, long-term options that are in the money, that are in the stock, so that I'm safe and I don't, I'm not in a hustle and I can wait it out. But of course, that little excitement is nice. And, and if you have a stock like this and there is this little potential for a short squeeze, sometimes I want to have that excitement. But money, in my mind, is already written off. So I was honest with you. And, um, but you need to figure out your own strategy. That's uh, all I want to say. Okay, so we got the short squeeze. And now what, uh, well, I mean, Michael Berry, right? Michael Berry is, um, I don't know, his, his tweets got more cryptic, more crazy, more, I don't know. I mean, he's a super smart guy and I really have a lot of respect for him. Honestly, if I had the chance to meet him, I don't know. If I would take it because he's some kind of uh, don't meet your heroes kind of hero, um, super smart, super everything. But I don't know if he's the guy I want to have a beer with. Um, so, well, he's, he's posting he's posting weird stuff sometimes, but uh, this message was nice. So it was uh, a tweet of him uh, that said the CEO just bought 166,600 shares and the CEO had a reason. So, of course, this is great news. Um, the founder uh, and the CEO, Soli, he founded the company. He's invested his personal money into his own company at this specific point of time. Why would he do that? I think he wouldn't invest his money if he thinks the stock price is going down. The company will do worse. Um, I think he's knowing something that we don't know. And I, I'm very curious uh, for the next couple of weeks if uh, we might see some press release or something, um, some updates, uh, everything. I am pretty sure that he's working on something with the new CEO, with the board, that um, that's increasing shareholder value. Because otherwise, why would he spend one million, one million of his personal money? I mean, this guy is 72 years old. Um, and and uh, you you shouldn't invest risky when you're getting older, even in, if it's your own company. And and that's well, if you get my point. Well, what I'm trying to say is, I mean, he should he pretty much knows what uh, what he has to do with his money. Um, and even if he's getting a paid pension by by his company or whatever, I don't know. I don't know how he has to rely on his personal savings because. I haven't read his, his CEO contract uh, or something, but it's always a good sign when insiders are buying with their own cash. Um, and that's something what Peter Lynch uh, was talking about. When, when you see actions like this, you should, you should follow the company because uh, those guys know, know more than, than we do on the outside. And this is a very good sign for me. And uh, it was, uh, I think it, it, it had a, caused a 10% uh, price change uh, for the stock into the positive. Um, right now, people are getting nervous again or get bored out, so prices down. But this is actually good news. And if we see something like that, then uh, to me, this is one more reason to just uh, stay into the company. Uh, yeah, and then uh, this was just a few days ago. Uh, Seeking Alpha prison operator Geo Group falls after two board members resign abruptly. Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, first of all, the, all the news that are out out there, if it's Seeking Alpha, if it's some press releases, there are people that are just talking about stocks. And you can find news, tweets, everything on a daily basis for each stock that is out there. And I'm not a real big fan of, of reading the news every day because there's something to talk about any day. And who says the share price dropped because those two board members resigned? I mean, it might be a coincidence, but who says that it's true? I mean, uh, the um, people on Seeking Alpha uh, are writing articles. You don't know their background. You don't know how serious they you you can take them. I mean, there there, there are guys uh, writing articles that are 15 years old. Maybe they are geniuses. Maybe they are prodigies. But um, it took me 36 years to really get into the stock market and invest. Um, 
reasonable amounts of money um, and see where this is going. So uh, do I take advice from a 15 year old? I tried to get into the stock market when I was 16, 17, something, but there were so many things that I had no idea about um, that, uh, that I would, my present me would not listen to the 20 year younger me because I was just not experienced. Uh, didn't have the, the temperament for the stock market, I guess. Um, I was buying because of price. I didn't have the knowledge of digging into the real fundamentals. Uh, didn't have the patience. So th there are just so many pieces uh, and, and, and articles and news out there that you can make a decision based on, on, on any article any day. And uh, people are just, I don't know, what I see in the price section, I think ma many people follow the daily news. They are hooked to news, um, check in the price every day. If there's no news out there, the stock is getting boring. It's not exciting. Um, being invested is, is, a, is a question of character and temperament. And if, if you're in for the long term, then I, I don't give a damn about news because I'm just watching for some news that change my fundamental thesis. And the fundamental thesis is the real estate is, is necessary. Um, if you buy the Geo Group right now, you can get the, the, the specialty prison real estate for a, a huge discount, a massive discount. And that infrastructure is not going away uh, in the near term because it's needed. So very hated stock. Um, it's profitable. Okay, they cut the dividend. Why? Well, because they need the money, right? Uh, financial restructuring. That's not something that that happens when you just blow out every every dime you earn. You need to save money, you cut the dividend. That's a good sign, actually. But people don't get it. They, I don't know. Um, of course, a 15% dividend is nice, but how, how long do you think companies can pay that kind of dividend forever? Um, they, they leverage up to pay you the dividend, and at some point they have to leverage down. And Geo is a profitable business, and everything that is not paid out in a dividend, and you run a highly profitable business, and you can reinvest that kind of money instead of paying it out to the shareholders. Don't you think that's even better for the shareholders at the current state of the company? I don't know why. <laughs> it's uh, sad enough that one has to explain that. Um, but uh, to me, that's, that, that, that's just fantastic. They can, they can deleverage, they can restructure that debt uh, on favorable conditions. So it's not an argument to me that people say, well, the, they cut the dividend, so the, the company went bad. That's a bad sign. It's a fantastic sign. Berkshire Hathaway never paid one cent dividend to anyone. They just reinvest in good companies. And if you reinvest your own money in the company that you run, I don't know. That's just, to me, that's just a great time to, to, to just buy the stock, honestly. All right. Um, people still talking about the meme potential of the stock. Uh, are meme stock short squeeze stocks? I don't know. I have no idea. But is Geo really a meme stock? Um, uh, I don't know. The definition of a meme stock is people post, pe people get very, very excited about the stock. And uh, that's not only because of the high short interest. Uh, the whole story is just awesome and it's developing. And uh, if you have uh, listened to um, Charlie Munger, um, Charlie Munger's YouTube video, uh, the, the reasons or uh, the, 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 the errors that people make uh, in, in judging information or in, in evaluating information and using information. Um, I don't know what the video is called, something uh, human misjudgment, blah, blah. He's talking about the Lollapalooza effect. And what is the Lollapalooza effect? It's the effect that you have when you are with a group of people that are like-minded, that are excited for the same reasons that you are, and you gather together in a group, and you're only talking about it. He compares it to a Tupperware party. So people join together, they're talking about how awesome everything is. Hey, there's this catalyst, there's the activist investor, there's the, the business fundamentals of the company are getting better, it's getting transformed into a digital business. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it does. It's uh, the GameStop story. And the you have seen what happened. And this is just Lollapalooza kind of thing. Of course, 
there is a chance that GameStop is touching the digital world. It's benefiting from the digital e-commerce, e-gaming business and so on. This is really great. I mean, GameStop, it was a once in a decades uh, event from a small cap company that was so underpriced that had the right catalysts at the right times and people got so excited and Reddit came, uh, stepped in and Wall Street Bet uh, stepped in. And this is nothing but a huge Lollapalooza kind of event that happened there. But is Geo that kind of business? I don't think so because people just hate the prison system. People just hate the stock. People hate the company. There's nothing to go digital about. There's nothing, there's no uh, benefit, there's no um, activist investor like a, a Ryan Cohen and who people just like because he founded one of the most customer friendly pet stores. What what activist investor would go into Geo stock? Some kind of Carl Icahn. Do you like Carl Icahn? I mean that that guy is just the the, the personified corporate raider. Um, there are a lot of negative aspects to the company. So if you get into the company, you you will experience a lot of uh, trash talk. A lot of I don't want to buy the company because it's making money off poor people and poor prisoners and so on. So there's a lot of negativity around uh, around this stock, and and I don't think that has a mean potential. The only potential it has is a short squeeze, and people get into it, or massive amounts of people might get into the short squeeze story, but not of the uh, the beneficial story, right? Um, most of the people view Geo as a as a prison operator. Nobody's talking really about uh, just the the rehab facilities that they have. The you know, helping uh, people getting back on track. It's very, very hated company for, I think, mostly the wrong reasons. But uh, who am I to judge? Um, I don't like many things that other people uh, like. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy. If if people complain about uh, Geo is a bad business system, I would say, well, if you own a Nike stock or if you own Apple, I mean. Uh, or if you own Tesla, have you ever looked at pictures of a an African cobalt mine, where you get the the raw materials for for the batteries? Uh, did you ever uh, watch a video of of a Chinese sweatshop where they they sew shoes or clothing or whatever? And uh, everybody forgot about uh, what's that? Uh, Foxconn. The, the 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 Chinese facility that builds the iPhones where people were jumping out of the windows because of the harsh working conditions. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's it's to me, it's like um, as long as it's not around my corner, I don't care. Problem. But uh, people in the States, uh, they see the Geo group and the US prison systems and everything is bad. But as long as stuff bad stuff happens in China or in Africa, people don't care, but they care here. And that is just a fact uh, to what I'm reading in the news and, and, and in the in the forums, in the in the subreddits and in the in the stock Twitch communities. Um, you you got to respect that opinion, uh, for, I guess, but um, I don't have to agree with it, but people don't have to agree with me. So th this is this is kind of what I think makes it hard for the Geo Group to really become a kind of a meme stock like AMC. People love the cinema. It's you get enthusiastic. You have some sort of oh, don't you remember when we were allowed to go to cinema? I want to go back to the cinema, and it's a. Uh, 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 burn the shorts, burn the shorts, and everything, and there's uh, manipulated markets. That's when you get the Lollapalooza effect because people stick together. I think you don't get the Lollapalooza effect in the Geo group except for the short squeeze potential. That's my opinion right here on a meme stock character. And um, that's basically all I have to say to the meme stuff going on here. Another question. Um, Will Michael Burry get back in? Uh, in my last video, I showed you this uh, kind of graph. Uh, people were talking about, well, Burry got out, so it has to be a bad stock. And I was sharing this um, little part down here. Um, and I want to make sure that you can read it. So excuse me for a second. Um, he's just saying that when a stock hits a new low level. He's just jumping out of the stock because he doesn't want 
to he doesn't want a single position to blow up his portfolio so these are just his investment mechanics um that doesn't mean that he thinks it's a bad investment and we have seen him jump back into a stock even on a lower level uh, i was in that's, i mean i'm following michael burry's portfolio uh pretty closely and uh i did a lot of coattail riding with uh, with his investments and also something that i jumped into was precision drilling uh, and he was changing his or adjusting his positions uh, frequently. So if the stock was going up, he trimmed it. If it was going down, he he bought more. I think he, at some point, he just uh, quit the position and got back in at a lower price. So um, this this guy is keeping is keeping an eye on the company. And um, when he when he posted when he posted that tweet um, right here. He didn't own a single position, but he was still following the stock. So you want to be, you, you might want to know that this guy is is just watching everything. And I think that the uh, chances are also not zero that he might get back into the stock, which uh, would be good news to me. But it's not bad news that he's out to me because uh, when the stock price uh, fell below $6, I, I, I was bu buying more because I'm not running a portfolio and maybe I don't have the same responsibilities that, that he has. Uh, and performing for his investors. So if you are a professional portfolio manager and you have uh, external clients, you might want to control your risk out there and also have an eye on your annual performance. But I don't have to do that. So um, maybe uh, although he would actually be as um, risk averse or... Um, he likes risk to take risk as much as I do. He just can't uh, invest in the position um, because external investors are watching him closely. But but I can do so, and and, and I still think the company is undervalued. Uh, nothing has changed fundamentally from my point of view. So if the price is going down more, I might even adjust my portfolio to uh, selling stocks with a loss and just jump back in uh, on in the money options uh, with a. With a lower, uh, with with, uh, with a little higher strike price, uh, so that in case uh, price is getting back to normal or what I consider normal level, um, I will recoup my losses uh, over proportionally. So that's what I'm doing, and uh, I only have two positions right now in my portfolio, and uh, most of it is geo. Yeah, uh, we will figure out uh, on his next filing. Uh, I think uh, from what I see on the Edgar database uh, from the SEC, the last update on the end of June positions uh, last year was uh, early August. So I expect that he will update his positions uh, early August this year as well. And then we find out what his positions are, what he did with his uh, core civic positions, if he got back on Geo, if he sold everything. I don't know, but we will see. And so I'm expecting uh, early August that we will know more about what uh, Barry's doing. So um, is the Geo Group misunderstood? Well, that's a pretty subjective point of view that I'm talking about. But I think yes. And I wrote an article on uh, on Reddit in the in the Geo Group, and I I stated uh, why I think that Geo Group is misunderstood. Um, the 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 weirdest arguments that I have read is something like uh, you have high criminality because you have a lot of prisons. So people really talk with that logic. And this is t just something that uh, twists my stomach because um, when you when you when you try to talk to people and educate them, you should first of all you should make sure that your logic is uh, consistent and it and it's right from an objective point of view. Um, otherwise, you're just talking nonsense and uh, nobody's got time for nonsense and people won't say, uh, well, you're a smart guy. They would actually say, wow, damn, you, you, you're really damn stupid, right? So if you're arguing there's a lot of, uh, a lot of crimes uh, or there are a lot of prisoners because there are a lot of prisons, I don't think you're getting the point because there are a lot of prisons because there are rules that you have to follow. And if you don't follow those rules, then you can get 
put into prison and that's what's happening. So if, if, if your country is starting a, a, a war on drugs and there's a lot of drug selling going on and, and, and the rules are getting tightened and the laws are getting stricter and the, the sentences are getting uh, tougher, well, then I guess you should just uh, figure out something else than selling drugs because otherwise they will put you into prison. And that's what happened in the 80s and in the 90s. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of stuff was going on in the US, especially on drugs and so on. And uh, people are getting put into prison. So if you earn money by selling drugs and that's what it's expecting you, that you shouldn't be surprised. And if uh, lots of people are still doing it, then yeah, eventually you end up with some uh, with a lot of prisoners and you need facilities. So, and if um, you listen to those people who say, well, if you close down private prisons, then um, there won't be so many people put into prison. Uh, I don't know where that comes from because uh, I don't see, I don't think that there is any church sitting out there and saying, well, now we have this big kind of infrastructure and we should make sure that we put as many people in there as we can. I think you're just twisting something around here. I guess there is a judge that says, well, those are the laws. That's what you did wrong. So eventually I have to put you into prison because that's the rules. And that's why you end up there. And that's this, uh, that is something wh that I don't get. And um, you have to be careful what you read on the internet. And I don't want to be all that ne uh, negative in this, in this video be because I, I don't know. But it, I, I'm following uh, the communities and, and, and the, the chatter that's going on. And it's just... Some things are just mind-bogglingly stupid what you read there. And, and uh, I'm like, do, do really people think that way? And um, what you have, what, what's happening in the, in the modern age, in the modern age of internet communities and social media, everybody can post their opinion and everybody can read other people's opinions. So what you want to make sure and what your responsibility is, you want to have a filter in your brain that says... This is bullshit. This is legit advice. This makes sense. This does not make sense. And what happens is that there are just a lot of stupid arguments out there. There is a lot of wrong logic out there and people read it. And if you just read it and consume it, you might end up on the wrong track uh, on, on a very, very confusing thought process. Uh, and you do that, that stuff is just going into your mind and messing with your brain. So you want to have that little bouncer in your brain that says only stuff gets in that's logic, that makes sense, that is true, and that can be verified, right? And if that little bouncer is in charge, then you will notice what a lot of just a lot of bullshit is out there. So be careful what you read. And uh, please, if my thought process or my logic is wrong in this article, for example, help me out. I mean, uh, just just uh, write in the comments um, where where you think my my uh, thinking, my, my error is in the process. I'm always happy, but you need to be open to, to also um, reflect on your thought process, also reflect on what other people are telling you and uh, question everything question everything that i'm saying i mean uh, this is this is for educational purposes no financial advice um but what i'm saying might or might not be true right i mean i'm trying to be as true as possible i'm trying to be as logic as possible but maybe i'm making errors and um i'm also um uh, just 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 a person uh, prone to my own biases or something although i know those kind of biases most of it happens emotionally and you just can't get rid of it. You can't be 100% rational all the time. So maybe I see things wrong. So please help me out. I'm always happy to uh, to reflect and to to improve my process and also trying to get more rational. Um, but let's talk about this article up here. I posted the link right there. There was this guy who was actually taking a deep look into uh, different kind of scenarios and he ended up with uh, four scenarios for the stock price also with the moonshot potential short squeeze kind of thing um is super uh, comparably super high price for replacement uh, costs of the facilities i i didn't do a deep dive and verified every number that he came up with 
um, but um, I just like the the logic and the in the thought process. Um, I would consider those numbers uh, a bit lower. I am uh, I'm comfortable with a fifteen to twenty dollar price target. Uh, fifty to eighty dollar price target is um, a little bit high for my taste. Um, because I think it's 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 oversimplifying uh, the valuation or the, the the replacement cost of the of the infrastructures because you have to keep in mind that we are talking about different regions, different areas. Um, Geo has a facility in downtown San Diego. I was I lived for half a year uh, in in San Diego, and this is this is this is a very nice city. And of course, uh, a facility in downtown San Diego. Uh, I guess increase much more than some sort of prison facility out there, uh, right off the highway in the middle of nowhere, where you can't run anywhere um, in the next uh, around the next fifty miles, right? So I think you have to keep that in mind, um, and that's what makes it hard. And since they run a lot of facilities, you would actually have to evaluate every kind of facility if it's a rented office space you have to value uh, an office space differently than than a, a prison uh, a prison facility uh, where it is it's in a city it's in the somewhere in the prairie that's a different a different approach uh, and so i think we might be lower here and the moonshot potential well that's just uh, might be uh, if we you talk about a short squeeze i mean we saw at, uh, what happened to uh, to gme um can't really place a number on that, but uh, I wouldn't be disappointed if the Geo Group goes to 300. I would sell everything, right? Uh, this is just, uh, it would be just insane, and I wouldn't uh, work another day of my life, I guess, except for more investing, but not my regular job right now. So, um, that's um, that's what I, that's why I think it's, it's a misunderstood stock because for uh, stupid reasoning by people, um, and uh, people not getting the value of the infrastructure as this guy does. And I would really recommend that you just read that article. You don't have to agree with the numbers, but you have to agree with the thought process. And I think it's uh, showing you the options where the stock might go. So this is this is uh, this is uh, just also very entertaining. Um, and those people put in a lot of time. Uh, if that wouldn't be so time consuming, I would make more videos, but uh, putting in researching, writing articles that takes uh, a lot of time. And uh, thanks to anyone who's putting information out there right here. I mean, uh, this is just great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, good info sources. Basically, nothing has changed. Um, if you want to want to find out the fundamental thesis, I added the link to the to the uh, Reddit article uh, right up here to the right. Uh, you can read it. Uh, basically, everything else is the, what supports my fundamental my fundamental thesis, and nothing has changed there. So um, just uh, just read it. Um, do your own thinking. Don't listen to everything out there. Stay stay uh, critically towards new information. Who is texting what? Um, don't get into the emotional kind of talks. I mean, we're talking about a business here. We're talking about investing. Investing shouldn't be emotional. Of course, if you are that kind of ESG investor, that's not a business for you. But if you're in the business to make money with the Geo Group, I think it's still under value. Price target for me personally, 15 to 20 bucks a share. Uh, a short squeeze potential might be there and it might even might even go uh, over 20 bucks. But uh, who knows? And uh, you want to be roughly right and precisely wrong. So what I'm saying, if you're in the stock, make sure um, that you allocate your uh, positions according to your risk profile. If you want to gamble, totally legit. I mean, but but just know that you are gambling. And if you want to invest, I would buy stocks or leaps that are in the money uh, and just wait it out until things turn back to normal again. Um, also think that they are working internally on something. I think they will be able to restructure their uh, their their bonds, their debts. Um, there's a huge risk, I think, in in 2024 because many bonds uh, uh, come due then. But I think they will flatten it out and uh, just stretch it out over a longer time horizon. Um, and so I'm very still very bullish on the stock. Fundamentally, nothing has changed. I think there are catalysts in the work in the making right now. 
and we just have to follow the stock. I really hope that I will be able to shoot you another video um, in the next one or two weeks. I don't know, things are pretty busy right now. If you like the video, please subscribe. You can expect more, I just don't know when. It's like investing, right? You invest in my channel, you know good things will happen, but you don't know when. Stay tuned. I wish you all a nice Sunday. Take care and see you all soon in the next episode.